my brothers and sisters. My name is Monsignor Al Schifano. I'm a retired priest here at St. Thomas the Apostle Parish in Tucson. I'm grateful to Father Lyons for the suggestion that uh, he, Father Gonzalez, and I from time to time put together a reflection, a video reflection. We're thankful to Monica Rafter of our parish who's handling technology. She's amazing at it for having set up this YouTube account. I hope that you will find it useful. It was the same uh, recording that she used for Sunday's Mass that she presented to you. And I know many of you saw it and appreciate it. Well, first of all, I'd like to say we miss you. And hopefully you miss us too. I know that we all miss the Eucharist. You know, Jesus is always with us. But he misses the intimate relationship with us that he experiences along with our experience when we receive the body of Christ in the Eucharist. Perhaps he misses us more than we miss him. And we pray for the day that soon we'll be able to return to our church to worship joyfully once again. A word about faith before I get into a reflection on today's readings. The pandemic is scary for us, but imagine how terrifying it is for those who do not believe in God. For them, this is all there is. Foot, and that's it, life's over. It's very hopeless. It's sort of like the mournful and hopeless song that Peggy Lee sang in the 1960s. The title was, Is That All There Is? By faith and revelation by Jesus, we know that there is more than this in this earthly life of ours. Don't get me wrong, we love this earth. We love life. We want it to last as long as possible. But there is more to come. The pandemic, pandemic is scary, but it's not terrifying. Now let us turn to today's readings. Monday of the fourth week of Lent. Amazingly, these readings fit our current situation like a glove. In the book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, he speaks of a new creation without weeping. No longer will a infant live only a few days. No longer will an old man be denied a full life. How fitting is that? In the Gospel of John, the royal official, whose son is dying with a high fever, comes to Jesus, and Jesus says, Go, your son will live. Servants meet him on the way home and say, Your son lives? He says, When did the fever leave him? It was the same time that Jesus said, Your son will live. These are messages of hope and messages of life. Some of you know me, know that I love the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits. And before that all happened, he began a prayerful life and he formed these exercises. And there are three, there's many aspects to the exercises of St. Ignatius, but there are three dimensions that I'd like to share with you and apply them to today's readings. The first is indifference. I'll more about that in a second. The second is entering into Scripture with our imagination to bring it more fully to life. And the third is colloquy, conversation. Conversation with God, but first conversation with Mary, through whom God came and through whom we reach God in Jesus. Indifference, that, that's a funny word, but it doesn't mean that we don't care. Of course we care. We care a lot. We care about one another. We care about salvation. We care about peace, hope, and justice. But indifference means, and another way of saying it, holy indifference means we don't become too attached to things. It doesn't matter, really, whether we are wealthy 
or poor, whether we are famous or ordinary, whether we have a long life or short life, the sense of indifference gives us a perspective of faith, a hopeful perspective. It says we don't rely upon these things to make the difference in our life. We are indifferent about things of this life so that we may be ready for the things of eternal life. So let us evaluate, you know, how attached do we become to things that don't really make a difference in our eternal salvation? The second aspect from uh, Ignatius of Loyola is entering into the scripture with our imagination. Um, certainly in the, the scripture reading from John with the royal official, we can enter into it. We can be whoever we want. We can be a character within the written story, or we can create a character or an object so we can observe and feel the emotion of what happens. Perhaps in our imagination, we can reflect on that gospel and pretend that we are one of the servants who are there, wiping the brow of the sun, trying to keep the sun's fever down. And all of a sudden, the fever stops. And they're amazed, and they don't know what happened. But they're also joyful. They run off down the road, and they go and they meet the royal official on the way home, and they share this wonderful news with him, that his son lives. Use our imagination. Whenever we encounter scripture stories, enter into the story. It brings the story to life. We feel the emotion, feel the joy. We feel the presence of Jesus in our life. The third aspect is of the Ignatian exercises colloquy. In the way Ignatian uh, teaches us, he says, begin with a conversation with Mary. It was through Mary that Jesus came to us, and we should go to Mary to bring us to Jesus. And so we enter into a conversation, perhaps in today's environment with the pandemic. We talk to Mary as our mother and know that as any mother, she worries about us. And we can share our worries and our fears and our hesitations, our concerns with her. And then Ignatius says, do the triple colloquy. The colloquy is a conversation between you and Mary. The triple colloquy is after a while you say, Mary, take me to your son, Jesus, and let's sit around a fireplace and let's chat a little so that you and Mary and Jesus go enter into a discussion where you, you lay forth um, all of your concerns, your hopes, your dreams. And so I leave you with those three aspects of today's readings from Isaiah and John. I would encourage you to read the readings and enter into your own uh, view of indifference, your own imagination in the scriptures, and enter into a conversation with Jesus and Mary. You know I like stories, so I'm going to close with a story that I think is appropriate to this. It's a story of a father who took his two-and-a-half-year-old son on a trip. It was the first time that they had been away from home alone. And it was the first night, it was time to go to bed, and the father moved his bed closer to his son's so he would feel more comfortable, less frightened, and then turned off the light. A few minutes later, the little voice says, it sure is dark in here, isn't it? And the father said, yes, it's pretty dark, but everything's going to be okay. And then there was silence. And after a few more minutes, the little boy reached his hand over and grabbed his father's hand. He says, Daddy, I'm going to hold your hand for a while, just in case you get scared. Let us hold the hand of God in this time. God is always reaching out to us. This is a special time to hold on to God's hand. Maybe God's even a little more scared than we are. Not as scared of what will happen, but scared that we won't really express and hold on to our faith during these times 
of challenge, these times of worry, these times of concern, in knowing that ultimately we're going to be okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.